Hey, buddy. Colleagues hey. Thomas LeCap and Luis Berrigan both work in San Francisco at 375 Beale. Both would prefer to live closer to their jobs. If you want to live comfortable, rather than worrying about if you're going to be able to make the $5,000 or $4,000 uh, payment on your, your house or condo or apartment, you know, I'd rather take a toll on my, my body. Uh, that's the reason why I moved to the South Bay. I couldn't afford to, to buy a, a home um, close enough. It is uh, Thursday around 5.31 or something like that. Getting ready to get this day started. The two men have made Monday through Friday sacrifices for their families for the better part of a decade. They each commute round trip four hours a day. Luis from Gilroy. Uh, morning, everyone. It's Thomas. About 4.30 a.m. getting ready to head out to work. Thomas from Tracy. <laughs> that means he has to tackle the dreaded Altamont Pass. Well, its nickname is the 580 Blues. It's bad. It's real bad. Traffic and weather together. A lot of people, they make the mistake of moving out there because, uh, you know, it's obviously cheaper out there. A lot of people cannot handle that, that freeway. Uh, say about 345, the start, traffic starts. You got the people zigzagging through traffic when you know you're not going to go nowhere. Um, I've seen people who fell asleep in their car right on the Altamont in the middle of the road. I don't know how many accidents I've seen. For Luis, the first leg of his trip is Highway 101. We actually have traffic um, 5.30 in the morning in, in Gilroy, and that's probably from all the people that live uh, like in Los Baños, Hollister, um, all the small towns out there, they all commute uh, into the uh, South Bay or maybe even further. Back to Alameda County, where Thomas has taken nearly an hour to get to the Dublin BART station. Now he has to find parking. If you get there at you know, 7 o'clock, uh, 6.30, uh, forget about it. 519, I don't think uh, I'm gonna make the next train. Uh, probably another 10 minutes for a train to get to upper 30s, or mid 30s around there. Nice and chilly. It's about a 45 minute uh, train ride uh, to uh, San Francisco. Um, it's the first stop, uh, so uh, I pretty much have a seat all the way through. No, nope, I'm not gonna catch it. Luis has made it to the Fremont part station. I try not to transfer, but if, if I'm running late or something, I might jump on the first train I see. Um, I'll watch a little bit of a Netflix on, on the phone um, or sometimes even fall asleep. Thomas has landed in San Francisco. 6.30, just getting to Embarcadero Bart. Um, then hit my way uh, to the building. Um, Embarcadero, I have about a half mile walk that could take, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Time's about uh, 6.45. It's me and uh, Stephen Baker here. Good morning, y'all. Luis completes the morning leg also in two hours. Believe it or not, sometimes I actually get here before 7.30. That's if everything goes pretty good. Like the tens of thousands of Bay Area residents who make similar commutes, fueled by caffeine and commitment, the two men complete eight hours work. <laughs> then they begin the two hour trek home to their families, the people who make it all worthwhile, the people they don't get to see enough of. A commute home varies because there's times that if I have to pick up my son and then um, drive through uh, neighborhoods in San Jose to get back onto the freeway, so that adds probably about a good 20 minutes to the commute. You know, usually you, uh, you leave when it's dark and get home when it's dark. You just got to do what you got to do to, uh, you know, pay the bills and live life. <laughs>